everyone and welcome to our fellowship of worship. Uh, today is a very, very exciting day because it is the Lord's day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And second, we are here to give tribute sa ating po mga tatay, sa ating po mga uh, tagapanguna sa ating tahanan. Let's greet everyone a happy Father's Day. And before we welcome our praise and worship team, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we dedicate this very time to you. Please be honored and be glorified. Join us, Lord, and be in our midst as we give uh, glory to your name. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Let's welcome our praise and worship team. Break out the symbols and tambourines. Trumpets and horns Raise up a banner and come with me It's time to worship the Lord Raise them together in unity We've got a reason to sing Lift up a heavenly harmony it's time to worship the King with one voice. Every tribe will praise Him. With one voice, every tongue will tell that the Lord is good and His love endures and His mercy lasts forever. With one voice, come and worship with your voice. With one voice, come and worship with one voice. Break out the cymbals and tambourines, call up the trumpets and horns. Raise up a banner and come with me. It's time to worship the Lord. Praise Him together in unity. We've got a reason to sing. Lift up the heavenly harmony It's time to worship the King With one voice Every tribe will praise Him With one voice Every tongue will tell That the Lord is good And His love endures And His mercy lasts forever With one voice, with one voice, every child will praise Him. With one voice, every time will tell that the Lord is good and His love endures and His mercy lasts forever. With one voice, come and worship. With one voice, come and worship with one voice. We'd like to welcome you also to our communion this morning. Uh, but before we do it, let's be reminded about the mission and vision of Southern Light. Southern Light exists to glorify God by loving Him, by loving our neighbor as ourselves, and by making disciples of Jesus Christ. Our mission statement goes like this, to be a community of dedicated believers, raising followers of Jesus Christ. This morning also, we are going to remember what took place the night before the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Nung panahon pong yon, sila rin ay nagre-remember nagre ng isang event that took place 100 years ago, and that 
was the Passover meal. Meron pong four cups actually when they did this uh, last supper ng ating Panginoon. The first two cups, the cup of sanctification and the cup of uh, uh, deliverance talks about their exit from Egypt. Ito po yung ginawa ng ating Panginoon Diyos when the Lord delivered them out from Egypt and brought them to the promised land. And so every time they took this Passover, they are remembering then what God did to them, redeeming them from their slavery to Egypt, bringing them to the promised land. Now the third cup is the cup of redemption. This is the new covenant that was instituted by the Lord Jesus Christ. This is uh, a, um, a, um, a thing na ginawa ng ating Panginoon to tell them what is going to happen. And that is that He is going to die to redeem us, not just the disciples then, but every one of us to redeem us from the slavery of sin and bring us to His new uh, family, to bring us to a new family actually, to a new kingdom. We are translated from the kingdom uh, of slavery because of sin and we are brought to the kingdom of God to be with Him. And then the fourth cup, the fourth cup is about a celebration. It is about singing praises and glory to our Lord. They were singing hymns in celebration of what God did and also of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. The Passover meal looks back at what happened in Egypt. They were brought out from Egypt to the Promised Land. While the, the uh, New Covenant will look back at what the Lord Jesus Christ did. So mga kapatid, habang... habang Uh, hinahawakan po natin ang saro ng katas ng ubas at tinitingnan ang tinapay na ito tayo po ay magpasalamat sa ginawa ng ating Panginoong Jesus tayo po ay manalangin Panginoon Diyos marami pong salamat sa umagang ito and Lord we want to thank you for your body and for your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary to save us from our sin and to bring us to your kingdom. And, and, and thank you, Lord, because you have considered us as part of your family. Salamat po sa iyong kabutihan. Salamat po sa iyong biyaya. Purihin ka sa pangalan ng Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Amen. Atin pong kainin ang tinapay. At inumin ang katas ng ubas. At lahat ay nagsabi ng Amen, Amen, and Amen. At this point, before we listen to God's message this morning, let's go to the Lord in prayer, lifting up all our needs to Him, all our petitions and our requests, even our praises to Him. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and we are very thankful, Lord, Our hearts are full of gratitude because of what you have done to us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your provision. Salamat Panginoon sapagkat kayo po ang nagdala sa amin sa Southern Light. And every one of us here are uh, uh, glorifying and honoring you because we know that we are here not by, because of coincidence but because of your divine providence. You brought us here to become part of this local body in honoring and glorifying you and most special, the Lord, in obeying the great commission that you have given to us. Lord, we come to you and we commit to you the Southern Light leadership. Bless them, Lord. Give them wisdom as they continue to lead the uh, Southern Light. Lord, I pray also for our brethren who are experiencing difficulties, health issues, uh, financial um, uh, needs, and uh, any form of needs, Lord. Tinataas po namin sila sa inyo. Nais po namin idulog sa inyo aming mga kapatid na may karamdaman. Nais namin idulog sa inyo si Ate Zen. Lord, patuloy niyo po siyang bigyan ng kagalingan sa kanyang karamdaman. Si Marizel, si Neri. And we're praying, Lord, for Andre, who is right now confined in the hospital. May your healing touch be upon him. I provide mo rin po ang pangangailangan nila. Gayun din, Panginoon, sila ang mga Silistino at yung iba pang uh, binigay na request ni Maydal. We're praying, Lord, that your healing touch be upon the whole family. May you grant to them, Lord, your your uh, grace and your mercy and your provision. We're praying for Tita Shilet, Lord. Praying also that you uh, provide to her the strength. And even 
healing sa lahat ng mga financial uh, uh, health issues niya, Panginoon Diyos. Patnubayan mo po siya. Uh, dalangin din namin ang aming po mga senior citizen na patuloy niyong bigyan ng kalakasan. May you continue provide to them, Lord, the wisdom so that they will not be... Uh, Uh, thinking na sila ay may edad na but we believe Lord just like Joshua and Caleb even though Lord may edad na pwede mo pa rin gamitin para sa inyong kapurihan we're praying for Southern Light in Santa Rosa sa panguna ni Pastor Joey ang uh, Zam 121 sa panguna ni Pastor Boji patubahin mo po ang mga gawain ito. And we're praying for our members who are working and staying abroad keep them safe Lord si Elizabeth, si Jason We're praying for JS and family. Patuloy niyo po silang patnubayan aming Panginoon. We're praying for Mami Ethelda and Dinky. Tulong mo po ang mag-inang ito na patuloy na makakope sa kanilang situation, especially the uh, situation ng Mami Ethelda. Patuloy niyo po bigyan lang kalakasan at uh, patuloy na wisdom, even si Dinky, as she helps her mom. Lord, we're praying that you grant to us understanding of what we are going to do next, especially po ang aming mga government officials. Tulungan mo po na magkaroon sila ng karunungan ng gagaling sa inyo. Most especially, Lord, that they would open their hearts to you and have you as their Lord and Savior. And guide them, Lord, as they lead our country to what is best for each and every one of us. Lord, we're praying for our message this morning. Kayo po ang pumatnubay sa pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, I'm caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all faith. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out. remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all fate hey, my heart and my soul I give you control Consume me from the inside out Lord, let justice and praise Become my embrace To love you from the inside out Everlasting Your light will shine when all else fades Never ending, your glory goes beyond all faith. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out of my soul. Cries out. My heart and my 
praising God for our partnership with Ictus Fellowship in Bacolod. Tayo po ay kabahagi ng kanilang gawain and we see each other as sister churches. Ngayon pong umaga, we are so blessed to have uh, Brother Gary, Gary uh, Selis from Ictus Fellowship na siya po magsishare ng uh, salita ng ating Panginoon. Especially uh, praising our uh, God because of our fathers. And um, Gary is actually a... Um, Uh, the uh, uh, administrative pastor of Ictus Fellowship. He's been working with Ictus for 14 years, but before that, he was the uh, he was working also as a uh, in the ministry of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship for 16 years. Meron po siyang tatlong uh, mga grown-up children na, and um, his wife Rose is working with Compassion International Philippines. Mahilig po sa kape. at mahilig sa aso at mahilig magbike kaya tamang tama yan sa grupo ng Southern Lions so ladies and gentlemen let's welcome uh, brother Gary Salis good morning in behalf of Ictus Bacolod family we bring greetings to our brothers and sisters in Southern Lights Community Church in Paranaque praying you are all safe in the Lord in the midst of this pandemic Our meditation for today, Father's Day, is the story of the prodigal son. If you have your Bibles with you, let us open our Bibles to chapter 15 of the book of Luke, verses 11 to and following. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Verse 11, Luke 15. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and he wasted all his money in wild living. About the same, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Verse 20. 
So he returned to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick! Bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard the music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years, I slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And all the time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money in prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead, has come back to life, he was lost, and he is found. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that your word is able to inspire us and correct us and direct us. We pray for your Holy Spirit to teach us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark Twain was once interviewed by a reporter who asked him, People say you are the best storyteller that ever lived. What can you say about that? Mark Twain answered, I am not the best storyteller ever. Then the reporter asked, Who would you regard as the greatest storyteller who ever lived? And Mark Twain answered, It would be Jesus. The reporter asked, If so, what is the greatest story ever told? Mark Twain said, The Prodigal Son. The parable of the prodigal son is one of the most famous parables of Jesus. It is an example of a true parable. It is a story and it has a plot. If you pay attention to the details of the story, you might disagree with its title being The Prodigal Son because this is the story actually about the father and who can be called the prodigal father because he was so extravagant in love and grace. So if you focus on the sons, you might miss a more profound side of the story. What is a parable? A parable is a story told with the purpose of giving some moral or spiritual truth. It is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Parables normally have one main point. We must look for the central message of the parable. It should not be interpreted by putting meanings to every detail in the story or in the parable. Si Jesus in gamit niyang parables to teach the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He was not trying to be hard to understand, but rather he intended to be understood. And how can you understand the parables? It lies in discovering the original audience to whom they were spoken. So our first task this morning is try to hear what this audience heard. Ano ang occasion when Jesus told this parable? 
In verses 1 to 2 of the passage we just read, gives us the background or the occasion why Jesus gave the parable to the prodigal son along with the two parables on it. So verse 1, we see that the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. Humble or sabi ng Living Bible, these honest tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus' sermons. Sinners is the designation of the people of the street whom the Pharisees during that time looked upon with contempt because they did not know the law. That is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 7. And in verse 2, we see that the reaction of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law with these sinners and tax collectors, they were grumbling, they were objecting, they were complaining, and they were murmuring. They disapprove of Jesus' acceptance of sinners to be with him. The Pharisees grumbled because they had no appreciation of the real motive of Jesus in wishing to reclaim abandoned persons like them. There are three parables in Luke chapter 15. One is the parable of the lost ship. The other one is the parable of the lost coin. And now in our passage, the parable of the lost son. All these three parables were spoken to the audience composed of tax collectors and sinners and Pharisees and teachers of the law to illustrate God's interest in them. It was the objections of the Pharisees and scribes or teachers of the law that compelled Jesus to tell the three parables. All three parables focus on the lesson that God rejoices when sinners come to repentance, so there should be no obligation when Jesus receives them. The murmuring of the teachers of the law and Pharisees at the grace of Jesus Christ and the favor he showed to tax collectors and sinners gave occasion for a more full revelation of that grace. God is inviting sinners to come home. Now the parable of the lost son must be understood in the light of the two parables which preceded. The lost ship and the lost coin. Ang ship and coin are now replaced by a human being in the parable of the prodigal son, the shepherd who looked for the lost ship, and the woman who looked for the lost coin now become our Father in heaven. It is from the Harper Study Bible. In the parable of the prodigal son, there are three points of reference which we will meditate upon this morning. The two sons and the father. Let's proceed with the younger son. When Jesus told this parable, he devoted the first part of the story to the younger son who wasted his possessions with prodigal living. That is found in verse 13. When you say prodigal living, in the Revised Standard Version, it says loose living. In the King James Version, it says riotous living. In the NIV and the New Living Translation Version, it is called wild living. That is why this parable has been called the parable of the prodigal son because it means reckless and extravagant. Let us look at the younger son in detail. Verses 12 and 13 says to us that the younger son is presumably no older than 18 years old. He was not married and he had an older brother. He would thus have little experience in managing his finances. So when the younger son asked his father for his share of the inheritance, in effect, he was saying, Father, I wish you are already dead. 
this father is depicted as a wealthy farmer. He owns a good number of servants and possesses a good number of lands so that his sons would have enjoyed privileged status in the community. But the youngest isn't satisfied with his lot. Our passage tells us that he wants everything that he can get when the father dies, and he wants it now. In the Old Testament, particularly in the book of Numbers and De Deuteronomy, inheritance laws in Israel were designed to favor the older son giving him a double share. So if there were four sons in the family, the eldest son would receive twice the share, and each of the other three sons would only receive one share. Now when the son, the prodigal son, asked his father for his inheritance, the father should have beaten or castigated the younger son for this request because it was an insult. Here we see that the younger son had committed a serious act of rebellion and disobedience. But after getting what he had asked, he left in a distant country, wasted his wealth in wild living. As the saying goes, wine, women, and songs. The younger son's share of the estate had been partly in land, but the description of the passage that says he got all together he had indicates that he sold what he needed to, the land and whatever properties or assets, and he turned his share into cash. So with lots of money in his pocket, the younger son sets out to journey to a distant land, far away from his father, far away from his older brother, and far away from any sense of responsibility and moral restraint. There he lived like a king, wasting all his money with all that he wants with. But after wasting all this, in verse 15, something happened and he gets what he deserves. He lost his money. Not only that, there was a prolonged famine that puts everyone, even average farmers, on the edge of survival. And his situation gets worse. He finds a job, but the job requires him to feed carrot pubs to pigs. Carrot pubs, by the way, is a Palestinian tree. And he can't even eat the pubs he is feeding to the pigs. Only the very poor would eat such food. One rabbi once said that when Israelites are reduced to eating carrot pubs, then they repent. This son, younger son, was reduced to the terrible level of feeding the most unclean of animals in their culture. One of the lessons of this parable is that when one abandons the father's house to venture into a far country, he ends up with an empty pocket, an empty stomach, and a starving soul. We all know this with the story of the prophet Jonah. Now going back to the audience or companions of Jesus at the time when he told these parables, the tax collectors and sinners will identify with the prodigal son. They know that they have squandered their lives and everything that was given to them. And all of us should be able also to identify with this prodigal son. Further with the story, in verses 17 to 20, we see that the younger son repented of his sins and returned to his father. He realized that he is much better off as a servant in, his, in the household of his father, even not as a son again. But when he returned, he was given the best robe, the family ring, and a banquet was held in his honor. 
he was treated not as he deserved to be treated after all his selfish and ambitious rebellious acts. The prodigal son was welcomed with mercy and grace when he returned and repented. The prodigal son has been described as a complete story of ruin and reconciliation. The seven downward steps, I forgot where I got this, but the seven downward steps of the prodigal son could be seen from verses 12 to 16. They are as follows. Self-will, selfishness, separation, sensuality, spiritual destitution, self-abasement, and starvation until he reached the bottom. Then verses 17 to 24 describe the prodigal son's upward climb to reconciliation with seven steps. Number one was realization. Number two was resolution. Then repentance. Number four is return. Then reconciliation, reclothing, and rejoicing. This is the story of the prodigal son. But there is also the other son, the older one, which makes us, leads us to our second point. The reference with the lost son is not the main point of the parable. It is found in the second part of the parable in the attitude of the older son. As described in our passage, he was always with the father, yet he had put himself on the outside. He failed to share the father's heart with its love for a lost son. Go to verses 25 to 30, and we will see who is the older son in this parable. First, he is a hard worker. Number two, he is also an obedient son. However, he pitied himself for all his work without receiving even a small reward. He was also envious of the treatment of his younger brother, even after his prodigal ways. This older son was angry. Now, in their culture, the elder brothers were to reconcile differences between fathers and younger brothers as one of their roles. However, here in the story, when the elder brother returned at the end of a long day's work, he refused even to enter the house. He is also grievous. This is also a grievous insult to the father's dignity and could have warranted a blessing. When he came and faced the father, he even failed to greet the father with a title like father or sir. Just as the younger son insulted the father by taking his inheritance, this older brother also insulted his father by not addressing him according to his title. It was an insult to the dignity of the father. Verses 28 to 31, again, the, the reaction of the older son was jealousy and disgust. Verse 29, siling niya, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, from the King James Version. A modern translation would say, See here, I have been slaving for you all these years. In the New Living Translation, I have been a slave to you. This language implies self-righteousness, self-pity, and an inward alienation from his father's feelings. The, the older son was accusing his father of cheating him out of a small gift while lavishing extravagant favors on the prodigal son. This son of yours, he referred to his younger brother. That statement says that the older brother was contemptuous and ready to think the worst of the younger brother. Question. Can you imagine anything worse than coming home and falling into the hands of an older brother in this parable? Now, the elder brother 
here is a transparent metaphor for the Pharisees and the younger brother for the sinners with whom Jesus was eating. In contrast to the father, who shows nothing but mercy to his long-lost son who has finally come home, ang older brother was so angry at the joy and celebration that was done for his younger brother. He was not only jealous, he was outraged. It was injustice in his eyes. Siguro, he was asking himself, how could the father kill the fattened calf? just because his stupid son had come back while seeming to neglect somebody like me, faithful, diligent, and loyal. Interestingly, the final response of the older brother to what his father said to him was never stated in the parable. It says the IBP Bible background commentary mentioned that it is providing the Pharisees with an opportunity to repent if they are willing because they are really like they are the older brother. Now, if you grow up in the church or have been a believer for many years, it is worth looking at the prodigal son's older brother. He is one of the most intriguing characters in all of Jesus' parables. Maybe a case study in what can happen to people who have been around religion for a long time. That was the attitude of the Pharisees who were among those listening to the stories. And in a larger sense, it would become the attitude of the Jews in general as the gospel spread to the Gentiles as recorded in Acts chapter 11. So again, the question, how could Jesus be so friendly toward known sinners, such as the tax gatherers, and so distant from people like the Pharisees who carefully practiced the finer points of the law? How could God be compassionate towards Gentiles, while the Jews who, would he, who had been his people for generations were passed by? Now, there is a parallel scene to this in the book of Jonah, especially in chapter 4 when Jonah prayed to the Lord that God relented of his actions and did, did not destroy Nineveh, which is the enemy of Israel. Jonah said to the Lord, O Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? That reply is parallel to the response of the father to the older son in verse 31. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. I like the commentary of Life Study Bible by saying, the father affirms that the elder son is encompassed in his love. The comfort is God never is that God never forgets who his children are and has great treasures in stored up for them, as mentioned in verse 31. The challenge is to maintain a proper perspective, the perspective of compassion and mercy that is at the heart of the Father. Now we go to the last point of our meditation this morning, which I would call the prodigal father because of his love for sinners. Now, there are two reactions in this parable that is worth discussing. Number one, why would the father allow the younger son to take his share of inheritance? And number two, there is a scene here where the father, when he saw his son from a distance, he ran. 
as an older man and embrace his son who was coming home. So we go back a little bit to verses 11 and 12 to tackle the first point. Now to us, once father, for one share of the inheritance as mentioned a while ago, was in effect to say, Father, I wish you are already dead. This is when the younger son asks that I want what is due mine now. So what kind of father do we see here? In a society stressing obedience to one's father, it would be a serious act of rebellion for which the father could have beaten the son or worse. The younger son does not ask kindly. He lacks grace and tact with his choice of words. In fact, he was demanding of his father. But knowing how gracious his father is, he says in effect, give me my portion of the inheritance now rather than when you die or retire. And the father did not argue or reason with the younger son. Why is that? This father knows that there are some lessons that a father cannot teach a son. They must be experienced. I remember Pastor Joe one time preaching on this parable says that the father knows, wise as he was, that the son will just squander everything that he had. But he has to give in so that he will learn his lesson. And one of the best giver of lessons is pain. Pain is a good teacher. As a father also, I believe that we cannot protect our children from the lessons that only pain can teach them. At some point in every home, the young must be released from their nest to fly on their own. The teenage years should be years when parents are teaching and preparing their children to grow up and be self-reliant. It is often a sad time when a young person is released from under their parents' care, but it has to be done so that our children will grow up. We pray and we hope that a godly character is formed before that time comes. Even, however, when good parents have done their utmost to prepare the youth for the world, he will sometimes walk away from all that he has learned. Again, I believe that the father knows that the son will eventually squander and lose all the money he has. And the pain must have been doubled knowing this and still giving in to the son. But the father has to give in in knowing that a lifelong lessons, again, are sometimes learned painfully. Number two, in verse 20, we, find, we see that the son was coming home and when he was far away, the father has already recognized him and he ran to meet the son. In the Jewish culture, it was a breach of a man's dignity, if, especially if you are old, when you run. Although familial love can take priority over dignity after a long absence. Now as the father saw his son, he picked up the lower part of his robe and ran to him. In the Middle East, that is not something that an older man of a family does not do. People at the time never showed off their legs and only in an emergency or a fight would a man tuck his robes in his belt for ease of his movement. Now those who are listening to this story would have thought that this father has done a shameful behavior. Now the Pharisees and the scribes all began to wonder where Jesus was going with this story, for no father would do such thing. However, this father was in pain for his son while he has been away from home that he was so ready to forgive that when he ran to his son, he embraced him. He accepts his son before even the son has a chance 
to explain. This story describes the prodigal father in great love with his son. Verse 20, the verse says there, and he kissed him. If you look at some other versions, it would say, and kissed him much. In other versions also, he kissed him earnestly. He kissed him earnestly, or kissed him eagerly, or kissed him often. From Spurgeon's sermons, it says, This shows the overflowing love of God toward the returning sinner. Our God, the Father, knows our hearts. He knows we sin and make mistakes. He knows when to discipline us and when to be gentle. He knows sometimes, many times, we run from Him and compound our problems. He knows when our hearts and spirits are heavy because of inner conviction and fear. And He knows when it is time to lift us up. Because at the heart of it all, our God, our Father, his desire is to have a loving, meaningful relationship with each of us, his children. In verse 22, the best robe in the house would belong to the father himself, but it was given to the returning son like you and me. The ring is a symbol of reinstatement to the sonship, and it was given also to you and me. Giving the ring and the, and the robe, the father is saying, I will not receive you back as a servant, my son. I will receive you as my beloved son. Let me close with what Phil Davis said in his book, Our Father's Heart. God, our father, wants to become a real person to us. Someone he, who is more than just the moral judge and ruler of the universe. He wants us to sense his approachability and his accepting smile. It is a personal, intimate relationship that God wants to us because God's love is personal. In conclusion, in the three parables found in Luke chapter 15, the lost coin, the lost ship, and the lost son, function as a word to the Pharisees. The lost is clearly the sinner whose finding or returning brings joy in heaven because it justifies Jesus' acceptance of the outcasts. When this is, these parables are heard by sinners and outcasts, it assures them that they are the objects of the love of our God, the Father. But not only to them, also to the Pharisees who think they are righteous. Our God, our Father, loves you and me. In fact, He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to embrace you. And when Jesus left this world, He sent the Holy Spirit to further embrace you, telling you that you are His beloved child. Let me close again with three personal questions. Number one, am I still like the younger son, still prodigal in my ways, still doing things that displease the father? Number two, how am I like the older son? Am I so focused in my hard work that I become resentful and forgetful of God's presence and love. And number three, how am I like the Father in my concern for my lost brother, for people around me who needs to hear the gospel in the midst of this pandemic? Happy Father's Day to everyone. May we honor our fathers today and always. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for being our loving Father, the one who loved us despite of our sins, the one who ran to us and embraced us because we were once lost. 
Thank you, Lord, for that love. We thank you even, Lord, today that you have even entrusted to us, our earthly fathers, to love us like you do. They are not good as you, Lord, but they are trying. They have failed time and again. But even then, thank you, Lord, that we have our Father whom we can look up to and celebrate them today. May your love enable our fathers to continue loving us and embracing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you, Brother Gary. Thank you for that wonderful message. And my prayer is that God will continue to use you. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's dedicate our fathers to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for fathers that you have given to us, to each and every one of us. We know, Lord, that our fathers are not perfect, but, but you have given them to us because you have that wonderful reason. And so, Lord, we are thankful for them. And we are praying for our fathers. Continue to strengthen them, Lord. Continue to provide wisdom to them. Keep them safe, Lord. Patuloy niyo pong patnubayan at gamitin pa. And, and ang prayer lang po namin, Panginoon, ang lahat po ng aming mga napakinggan mula po sa inyong salita ay maging bahagi ng buhay ng aming po mga magulang, lalo na po ang aming mga tatay na narito. Continue to bless them, Lord. And thank you for for, for giving them to us. We love you, Lord, as we love also our fathers na narito. Salamat po muli sa kanila sa pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen. And again, we'd like to greet everyone a happy Father's Day. And this is not only for the Southern Light and even for other churches that are joining us. Happy Father's Day. And uh, as token of our appreciation sa ating po mga tatay, uh, Southern Light prepared a uh, Bible, a wonderful Bible that they can use as well as a journal. Ito pong journal na to kung saan pwede nilang isulat ang lahat ng kanilang discoveries while they're reading the Word of God. And so this will be delivered to you, right? Para po itong mga, yung inyo po mga elders will be bringing this to your houses. So abangan po ninyo ang aginaldong ibinigay ng Southern Light sa lahat po ng mga katay. Again, Happy Father's Day. Once again, we'd like to thank uh, Brother Gary Sel Selis for uh, delivering the message to us. And thank you everyone for worshiping with us even this morning. Be reminded about the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. These three are always with us. I'll see you next Sunday.